Hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. We'll see you next time. Have a great day, Mustangs. We have breaking news, so let's Come get right to the Massachusetts. So life here in Massachusetts. Hello, Mustangs. Today is Friday, June 5th. On this week's show, we sit down with some graduating seniors, we go fishing for the big one, and we pay tribute to a special Mustang. So get ready, Mustangs. This school year's final episode of NHS Update Quarantine starts right now. Mustangs and welcome to our last show of the 2020 school year. I'm Julianne O'Neill. And I'm Joey Demeray. Let's get started with some news. The class of 2020 graduated on the Hill this past Sunday. The virtual ceremony commencement exercises began at 11 a.m. followed by a drive through procession at noon. Students received their diplomas and were cheered on by the staff, family members, and community. Seniors were able to enjoy this unorthodox form of graduation, but if you were to have spoken with them a few months ago, they may not have imagined how their high school careers would have actually ended. Sophomore staff reporter Michaela Hurley brings us more. High school seniors have had a truly unique end to their 12th year of school. Almost 4 million students nationwide are graduating, and because of the crazy turn of events, most of them are spending the end of their senior year at home. So when I first found out that school was canceled, it was sort of like, oh, like we knew it was coming, we really did, but... As time goes on, I think I start to realize more like all the things I am missing out on and and like the different experiences that like you would have felt being in school and going through the times. NHS seniors Adeline Jeanette, Elizabeth Marquis, and Narette Francis have all been affected differently by the pandemic. Marquis, a member of the NHS Music Ensembles, has seen most of her performances canceled. Um, well, my last Micah got canceled and my last few performances for band got canceled so that's kind of upsetting because that's been a pretty big part of like my entire high school time. Narette Francis however has taken this in stride and has accepted this new senior reality. It's kind of like one of those things where you know I know I can't do anything about it and the school and all the teachers have been so sweet about it and they've really try to make this time as best as possible. With the end of the school year being a favorite for many seniors, the cancellation of school and events hit hard. I think the saddest part about it is the fact that like we just won't be able to experience it the same way, you know, like time doesn't stop during this pandemic, you know, we're, we're getting older and, you know, college is eventually going to start and it's just like something you miss out on. Even though senior year didn't turn out as these girls hoped, they're looking on the bright side for better things to come. Reporting for Mustang Magazine, I'm Michaela Hurley. Thanks, Michaela, and good luck to the class of 2020. If you missed any of the graduation action, you can watch the ceremonies by visiting the Nord Community Media Station website. Now for some more announcements. Student Council elections are approaching. The primary elections are on Monday, June 8th, followed by the final elections on Monday, June 15th. Students will vote through a Google form sent to their school email accounts. And that's not the only thing students will find in their email. In order to maintain normalcy, the guidance department has released another edition of the Stall Street Journal, which hasn't missed a beat since the school closure. This month's issue features video service director and NHS alumni Jack Tolman from the NCM station. Last month, the Mustang family experienced a heavy loss when beloved student Taylor Lynch passed away. Junior staff reporter Jake McCarthy helps us remember the beautiful person that she was. Taylor was like a ray of sunshine. She brought so much joy to the high school and to camp wherever she went. She just loved people. She loved the teachers, she loved the students, she loved the cafeteria workers. She just had a relationship with everybody and everybody loved her. As many may know, Norwood recently lost Taylor Lynch, a loved student at Norwood High School. With graduation nearby, it's important we remember the impact Taylor had on the community. 
her energy has impacted so many people, not just anyone in the school, but like the town of Nord themselves are just going to be really impacted by her. There's no way you can't remember her, everything that she did, how she made people feel. She was just a really great person and everybody will carry that. I think she really just set a standard for how we should be treating other people and you know to always you know be grateful for each day that we're given. And um, that's going to be you know a spirit that is carried around for Nord for years to come. She could just walk in the room and everyone would just like, she just made everyone so happy. She made everyone feel very loved. It was so loved. Like yeah. people would be having a hard day, you just hear giving people hugs like like an angel on earth. Seriously. Like, she... An angel on earth. That's what Taylor was. And who else to know that than Susan Linehan? Taylor's aid. She was just a beautiful soul, just a good person, just kind and loving and sweet. She was very complimentary of other people. She made people feel good about themselves. She could always read people. She could always tell if somebody was having an off day. I thought I had a poke of face, but she always knew if something was bothering me. And here she is trying to help me. <laughs> While Taylor may be gone, she will never be forgotten. If there's one thing that we can take away, is that Lynch's ideals and positivity have and will live on in the hearts of many. Reporting for Mustang Magazine, I'm Jake McCarthy. Thanks, Jake, and condolences to all of Taylor's family and the people that loved her. She will never be forgotten. Now for a couple more announcements. Students, the term is nearly over. Make sure you're checking your Google Classroom for your classes and assignments. If you're not sure what's going on, please email your teacher directly. And if you're having trouble with your Chromebook, please email rjones at nora.k12.ma.us. We're now into the third month of the COVID-19 pandemic, and social distancing has become a way of life for most of us. Recently, I caught up with an NHS student who's been using this extra time and space to do what he loves the most. Nord High School junior Ryan Sue has been spending his quarantine days out of school at the pond. Well, I, you know, obviously I've got a lot more time in my hands. Three to six hours a day has definitely kept me busy. Um, and it's just, I think it's a lot better for my mind than uh, sitting at home, watching TV, playing video games all day get some fresh air you know. Sue has been a fan of the sport since he was just a little kid. Uh, I really started fishing about two years ago you know before that it was just worm and bobber. I remember when I was five I used to live in Dedham and uh, I remember my, gran my grandfather would take me out to a little uh, stream behind the CVS. Now with a couple of years of fishing under his belt Ryan has adapted new methods that help him catch the fish he endeavors. My favorite fish species to uh, catch is Definitely trout. I like all all of the uh, three major trout species. You got your rainbow trout, which we're fishing for right now. You got your brown trout, then you got your brook trout. Well, right now, I've got my trout outfit going. Um, got some pink power eggs, and uh, we're going for the stockies. Ryan's fishing has influenced many of his peers, specifically junior Dante Zaldivar. Oh, Sue's an amazing fisher, definitely. Yeah, he he knows way more than me. I, I kind of think of him as a mentor, really. With all the bodies of water that is present in Massachusetts, Ryan prefers to fish locally. Uh, I like to keep it local, you know, uh, right now we're about 15 uh, minutes away from my house. Um, I go anywhere from like, you know, just down the street at Willow Pond, Buckmaster. Um, I just try and keep it local. But on some occasions, he likes to take the extra step. Last summer I went on vacation down in Key West, Florida. I did some deep sea fishing down there. Now because of our situation, this summer, Ryan will have to take a new approach on his fishing game. You know, I think that fishing is a great way to get outside during the quarantine, get some fresh air after we cooped up in the house uh, for, you know, sometimes a couple days. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where you're naturally spaced out because, you know, you don't want to be casting your line over, over each other's. I uh, try and stay six, eight feet away make sure they can't uh, infect me or anything, it's, it's important. With this in mind, fishing has been a popular activity for Ryan and many others during quarantine. Fishing with friends, that can be a lot of fun. You talk, you just uh, hang out for a while, and uh, when you're fishing alone, it's a great, great chance to uh, clear your mind. Uh, think about, you know, 
what's going on in your life, how your day's going, you know. Just uh, be at peace. The best part of fishing is the thrill when you get a bite and you, you get to reel that fish in and it's just really exciting. Seeing his friends revel this activity, Sue has a prominent future in fishing and plans to take his talents to NHS to broaden the fame of the sport for teenagers. I'd say that uh, starting a fishing club in Norwood High School would be a great opportunity for uh, kids um, at school to just learn how to fish, you know, share, share fishing spots, secrets. I think um, a lot of people like to fish a lot more than, you know, I, I might know. So it'd be, it'd be great to uh, meet some new people. Considering COVID-19 and the years ahead, Ryan hopes to continue the enjoyment of fishing for all the right reasons. Maybe you don't catch as many fish, but, you know, uh, definitely catch some memories. Reporting from Mustang Magazine, I'm Joey Demeray. With other people this break. Just, uh... Oh! <laughs> That's awesome. Might have one. <laughs> Never know. Special thanks to Ryan Sue for giving us access to his story. Hope you catch the big one this summer. Now let's send it over to Rose Donovan with a sports update. Mustangs, I'm Rose Dunman with your sports update. The Boston Herald recently named Norwood guidance counselor and boys basketball coach Krista McDonald coach of the decade. McDonald's success as the Braintree girls head coach over the past decade is well documented. Her team's consistency found themselves at the top in Massachusetts. She won 200 games, four state titles, and took home an incredible eight Division I South sectional titles. The highlight of her run was a three-year stretch from 2013 to 2016 in which the Wamps won a pair of Division I state titles and 63 consecutive games. We are proud of Coach McDonald's accomplishments and can't wait to see what lies ahead for the boys program here in Norwood. Congrats, Coach! In other news, the MIAA Board of Directors met last week to discuss the plans for fall sports. The group says it's hoping schools will get to play a full fall schedule. In a statement last Tuesday, they announced that they are not planning to make any changes to the start date of the fall 2020 season. As it stands now, the scheduled start date for fall practices is August 24th, except for football, which may start on the 21st. The MIAA is also creating a task force to examine the potential impacts of the COVID-19 crisis. They will review all procedures, such as practice requirements, fan attendance, and transportation. In addition, the task force will assess health, state, and community conditions as they develop through the summer. Well, that's all I have for your sports update. For more for more content, be sure to check out our sports blog at ustangs.com. I'm Rose Donovan, now back to the Anchors. Thanks, Rose. That's all we have for today and for the school year. Before we go, we'd like to congratulate the students of the month for May, Allie Martin and Sean Brutus. NHS Update will be back in September. Until then, be sure to check out all of the content on our YouTube page linked at the end of the show. And as always, hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Have a safe summer, Mustangs. We'll see you in the fall.